Yes, good evening and happy Sabbath and welcome to another live Bible study here at the Philadelphia Seventh-day Adventist Church. And of course, we, we just want to extend special welcome to, to all our listeners and our viewers, wherever you are joining us as it relates to our YouTube channel and also our Zoom account. Uh, we praise God for your presence and your support thus far. And we pray that this evening experience in the Word of God will be a tremendous blessing to all of us. And we can be closer drawn to Jesus Christ as we prepare ourselves for his soon return. Um, joining me this evening again, um, we have what is called, um, we have Elder Desmond James and also Elder Julia Clark and of course Pastor Jeremy Parker. And we are looking forward to a very stimulating study as we look at the topic today, a glimpse of the next world empire. At this time, Ella James is going to pray for us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in you and your lordship in our life. Heavenly Father, we praise you that indeed you have given your word to us, dear Lord, that we can be enlightened at how we may live according to your glory. We thank you, dear Lord, that the remembrance of your holiness brings us joy. And as we enter your word, dear Lord, we ask that the Holy Spirit come in and inhabit us, dear Lord, and illuminate our minds so that we may be able to see the precious truths hidden in your word. And as we see them, dear Lord, may we make convergence in our life, which are necessary to bring us to holy living. We pray, dear Lord, that those who are listening may be convinced by your word of the truth. And may they commit their lives in such a way that it will bring glory to you, dear Lord. Guide us as we enter this study. And help us, dear Lord, to be a perfect example of what true Christian living is so that those looking on may be coffeeous of that lifestyle and enter into the joy of your salvation. In Jesus' name we do pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ella James, for uh, um, that wonderful prayer, because we need prayer in order to understand the word of God as we ask the presence of God to be invoked upon our studies. And of course... This is a very interesting study because we hear about um, the New World Order and all of that and so forth. And, you know, we hear about different world empires and so forth and so on, right? We hear all of these things from time to time. And from time to time, we are intrigued by these things. But what does the Bible have to say about what is the next major world empire that we will have to face one day, right? Let us look at what the Word of God has to say about that. And of course, the context of our study is from the book of Daniel chapter 2. And of course, we understand that Daniel chapter 2 is a very, 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 very powerful passage of Scripture as it relates to sacred history and also the, we're talking about prophetic utterances that actually designed by God to stimulate faith in us. And of course, we're going to explore that. And of course, we understand that this passage of Scripture speaks to the image of Daniel chapter 2, an image that was revealed to a king who experienced a dream. A dream. And of course, I said dream because a lot of persons, they love dreams. And they love to dream. Um, Ella Clark, do you want to um, just kind of see if you could shed some more light as it relates to the background, the context of this beautiful study as we engage in what is the next world empire? Sure, Pastor. Greetings to everyone. A couple of thoughts to help shape the chapter that we're going to look at pertaining to Daniel chapter 2 is that it isn't only prophetic, if mm -hmm. you will. It's one of those eschatological prophecies, meaning an end time prophecy oh, yes. for, yeah, for yes. our time. Yeah. But 
what surrounds that prophecy is the fact that it still points to Christ. When we look at some of the history and we understand how Daniel ended up in Babylon, if we take those two nations, we see a great contrast. Yeah. We see Babylon, who is a nation that is idolatrous in practice, a pagan nation. And then you see Daniel, who comes from a nation, Jerusalem, one that is loyal and obedient to God. And so we see Christ, yes. if you will, in the man of Daniel yes. confronting darkness, mm -hmm. which is Babylon. Yeah, especially chapter 1. Yes. Um, the Bible talks about the fact that Daniel and his friends, they purpose in their heart that they will not defile themselves. And of course, when they experienced training, they, they were examined by the king and their qualities in terms of true worshipers of God were distinguishable among the other individuals, Definitely. right? So Definitely. they truly represented Definitely. Christ in that context. And you yeah. know, Pastor, it's interesting that you raise that point because it shows us that these companions of Daniel, mm -hmm. not just Daniel, mm -hmm. displayed Christ-like behavior, yeah. Christ-like practices, Christ-like character, mm -hmm. and as a result glorified God even in the midst of yeah. the paganism that surrounded yeah. them. Yeah, darkness that exists mm -hmm. there. And of course, um, chapter one form a very beautiful context because we understand that Daniel and his friends found themselves in a strange land, yes. as you are pointing out, yes. right? Uh, and despite being in a strange land with different values and different customs, we're talking about surrounded with idolatry and paganism, they still worshiped the God of heaven. They remain faithful to God completely in all their undertakings there. That's what we, under, we understand based on that passage. But the, the, the Bible will have us to understand in chapter 2, right, verses 1 come down, mm -hmm. the king, this powerful monarch, mm. this powerful um, figure in that time, he actually went to his bed. And while he was on his bed, based on extra biblical sources, he was reflecting on the future of his kingdom. Mm -hmm. He Indeed. was reflecting on the future of Babylon. And of course, <laughs> and of course, we often do that too yeah. as individuals, right? When we reach a certain place um, in our lives in terms mm -hmm. of achievement, in terms of attainment, in terms of success we often reflect on what's next, what's yes. going to be new yes. as it relates. So that's the context. So he went to his bed with that on his mind, and he got up with a miraculous, in my view, um, <laughs> experience. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed, <laughs> indeed. A, a miraculous experience. And we understand that the miraculous experience was that he went and he received a dream, and somehow, you know, he was having some difficulties with the dream. He was having some difficulty, difficulties in terms of understanding the dream, um, interpreting the dream, and so forth and so on. And so um, we saw in that particular experience from Scripture, supernatural intervention in all of that, mm -hmm. in all of that. Because in it, we are seeing the manifestation of what is called the gift of prophecy and so forth and so on. And we're going to explore that in our studies today. Okay? We're going to explore. I think we did well in terms of um, from the context there, right? Yes, yes yeah. because even yeah. when you bring up prophecy, yes. it again, it mm -hmm. points back to Christ. Yes. Christ yes. is the center of this entire chapter mm -hmm. as we will continue to unfold and discover. Yeah, so, so I, I, I want us to kind of to kind of stimulate our discussion today, um, elders. Um, could you read for me, um, Ella Desmond, Second Peter ch um, chapter 1, verses 19 to 21. And we're going to look at the old idea or the old question, what gift has God given to man to reveal the future? Right? Because this is what the dream was about. We're talking about revelation of the future, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So Second Peter chapter 1 and verse uh, 19 and to 21. 21. Yes. 
We mm -hmm. have also a more sure word of prophecy. We are up unto, we do well, that we take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in our hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the prophecy came not in olden times by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen. So it used the word prophecy, Elder Clark, yeah. right? The word prophecy, and of course, the Webster's Dictionary defines prophecy as what is called prediction of the future. Mm -hmm. Prediction of the future. That's what prophecy is believed to be. Um, but, but based on my understanding of prophecy, prophecy not only have what is called a predictive function, but also have another function. Because prophecy not only foretell mm -hmm. something, but also involve foretelling, right? Foretell means that you are predicting the future, but foretelling relates to counsel and exhortation. The same thing that we do in preaching, where you tell mm -hmm. people what to do. And how people to how people need to live their lives and the choices that people need to make. So that's a part of prophecy, right? But we need to understand that in this passage that we are dealing with, prophecy is speaking to the whole idea of prediction because that's what we that's what Daniel two is actually talking about. Um, any any other reflection on that? I mm -hmm. think as as Elder James had read that passage, it also underscores that. Christ is not a mere fable, yes. and that what we read are not the stories that come out of nowhere and go nowhere. Mm -hmm. What we read in the word of God can be proven, substantiated, and it is a sure word oh. in which we can yeah. stand on, believe in, and be guided by. Yes, yes. And of course, I like that piece there because we need to underscore the point as well that based on the Bible, um, the gift of prophecy or prophetic function, especially when it, when it speaks to the, the predictive piece, that is God's prerogative full stop. Amen. Amen. That is God. In other words, man doesn't have the ability to accurately predict the future except is under the influence of no one else but God. Mm -hmm. All right? Amen. <laughs> well said. And of course, um, I, Isaiah 46, verses 9 and 10 um, speaks to that. Right? Could you, could, could you read that, any one of you? Could you read that for me? Isaiah 46, verse 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Amen. Powerful. Any, any, any thoughts on that? Any thoughts on that? Well, this, um, that text highlights the, um, the quality of God, that he's all-knowing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, powerful, that's, that's a powerful thought. And if he's mm -hmm. all-knowing, mm -hmm. he can see the future. Mm -hmm. Certainly. He can see the future the way we see the present. Uh, amen. <laughs> he's <laughs> God yeah. all by himself. himself. He yeah. is superior. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, God can see... And, and our understanding is that God is omniscient in the sense that he can see past, present, and future all at the same time. Mercy. Wow. <laughs> Only God. And, and, and that's a very important piece that we need to understand. What assurance does this give us as children of God? What, what assurance you know, any thoughts there? What assurance this give us? I guess I'll jump in again yes, with the ladies first. Yeah, no, no problem. <laughs> we read the word of God and can be sure mm -hmm. in what we read. Mm -hmm. 
if God knows the past, the present, and the future, and his word says this is going to happen in the future, I believe it because the Bible said it, and that is good enough for me. Yes, very, very, very powerful. Be be because the reality is that God exists outside of the present affair of men. Mm -hmm. His power, his presence supersedes all that we experience in this life as human beings. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that gives us a powerful assurance that, you know, you'd want somebody like this in your corner. Amen. In your life, as you navigate life, right? Um, yeah, that's, that, that's powerful. The sh assurance we are also given is that we can trust his word. Mm -hmm. It's reliable. Amen, amen. Yes. And you know, I was just thinking, we as humans, we want to be understood as men and women of God who have a certain level of integrity. Yes. We're credible. And God's word brings that level of credibility to any other book, mm -hmm. any other writings that you may ever come across. Yeah. When we approached 2000, there were so many prophecies. People like Nostradamus <laughs> came out with things that went nowhere. But yet, when we take God's word and we read it from Genesis to Revelation, what we take time to study, we will see is credible and true. Now, this doesn't negate faith. Hebrews 11, 1 yeah, yeah. says that we need faith. Faith, faith is the substance of things, yeah. Amen. And that yeah. without faith, it's Hebrews impossible. 11, 6 it's says it's impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. But when we read, as we go through this particular chapter and mm -hmm. we look at that dream. Yes. And we see that it isn't just dream, a dream. Mm -hmm. This dream has become history. Yes. It's powerful. Yes, sacred history too. Amen. You know, Amen. so that, that, that's important. And of course, you spoke about the authenticity of God's word. And of course, God's word, or God's words are authentic because of who God is. Yes. Right? Of mm -hmm. who God is. Because he's divine. That, that's our understanding. And of course, we cannot overemphasize the whole idea that, um, the whole idea that, when, when it comes on to, to God, this predictive foretelling function is, is a distinguished quality. This distinguishes God from every other creature in the entire universe. Look at what Jesus says. Um, in, um, so why did Jesus say that he foretell or foretold his disciples the future? What's the reason for that? What's the reason for that? Um, John 14 and verse 29. Can, can somebody read that for me? Or for us? Mm -hmm. 14 and 29. Yeah, 14 and 29. John 14, yeah. 29. Yeah. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it come to pass, you might believe. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other text or any other thoughts on that? Because that's a powerful, that's very, very powerful there. John, John 13, 19. Mm -hmm. Last Galder James, John 13, 19. John 13 and verse 19. Now I tell you, it come, that when it come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. So belief is coming out there. Mm -hmm. yes. Faith in his word. Mm -hmm. You know, Christ, when he was talking to his disciples, he told them that they might believe. When we read God's word, mm -hmm. he tells us. And as certain things, as God gives us life, comes to pass, we can believe but we need to know his word, of course. We need yeah, to study ourselves. his yeah. word, of course. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. We have to study his word to know that, right? And of course, and of course, when it comes on to this particular function, as I mentioned before, um, it is significant to individuals who are serving God. 
All right, for example, who does God reveal his secrets to concerning the future? Based on Amos chapter 3 and verse 7, who does God, to whom does God reveal his secrets of the future? Um, Amos 3 and verse 7. What does that say? Amos 3 yeah. and verse 7. And verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servant, the prophet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, so the text says that God will do nothing except he's reveal his secrets unto his servant, the prophet. So, so when it comes unto prophetic gift or the gift of foretelling the future, that is, square, that is squarely reserved to, to God's servants, are the servants of God. And when we talk about the servants of God, what are we talking about there? What are we talking about there? Go ahead. Yeah. Those who are obedient to him mm -hmm. and obey his will. Yeah. Those who have a connection with the Lord. And of yeah. course, um, what they predict um, can come forward. Any other thoughts, biblically or otherwise, and, and as it relates to that piece? As servants, just stemming on what Elder James said, mm -hmm. we are servants. Mm -hmm. We can tell. We tell through what we have learned in God's word, from what we assimilate yes. when we hear sermons, when we study, when we participate mm -hmm. in different mm -hmm. studies and understanding of God's word. Yes. So while I do not qualify as a prophet because I am not foretelling something in the future, yes. I can still tell based on my study of God's word as, mm -hmm. as what we're doing here today. Yes. The Great Commission is to go and tell. Mm -hmm. And of course, what I'm hearing and saying there is the fact that, you know, as servants of God, you only can reveal things about the future, even things current, based on God's revelation. Please, yes. And, and of course, you cannot know God's revelation unless God reveals these things um, to us. Yes. Right? When it comes down to the secret things of God, we can't know these things because the Bible says, by searching, you can't even find God. As human beings, because of our human limitations, right, we cannot search and find God. Yes. Right? God has to reveal himself to us in our quest or in our effort of searching. But the privilege of, of the servant that, the, 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 that um, Amos 3 and verse 7 is talking about is that God constantly entrusts right, certain responsibilities and certain knowledge about the future mm -hmm. because of the relationship that these particular servants have with God. Right? And of course, one of the fundamental points that you brought out is obedience, because we are servants to those whom we obey. Yes. And if you are obedient to God, it means that you are God's servant. Amen. Right? So, Amen. so I, I think that, I, I'm not sure if you agree with me, but I, I think that if a person is not living the way God intends, that person can't be God's servant. God Absolutely. will not endow Why? the person with certain responsibility as, That's right. as sacred as foretelling the future. Yes, and you know, Pastor, yeah. our life represents Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, we spoke about some of that Wednesday evening. Yes. And the interesting thing about a, a prophet, if I could take us to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, and I'm going from verse 20, talking about a prophet. It says, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet yes. shall die. Yes. It goes on to say, and if thou say in thy heart, how shall we know that the word which the Lord hath not spoken? And finally, verse 22, mm -hmm. when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, 
that is the thing which the Lord hath not, not spoken, spoken. Mm -hmm. but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Yes, yes, very, very powerful. And of course, we're going to explore Daniel chapter 2 to see some of these nuances about foretelling, about prophecy, as it relates to this particular dream. So we understood, we understand from scripture, right, that, that this particular king, this monarch, received a dream. And he was perplexed about the dream. He was perplexed about the nature of the dream, the interpretation of the dream. And the Bible says he did something. Whom did the king summon to show him his dream and its interpretation? Let us go into it now and see if we can learn some important lessons about the human nature, human limitation, and also the power of God. Because guess what? We need to let it be known that, and I don't want this to, to leave my mind, Daniel chapter 2 prophecy is not about Daniel. Yes. It's not primarily about the Hebrew boys. It's not primarily about even Nebuchadnezzar and others. It's primarily about God, the nature of God, the power of God, the wisdom of God, and God's involvement in the affairs of men. So to whom did the king? So the king got the dream, so he sent forth some individuals. Whom did he send forth? to tell him about his dream and his interpretation. Daniel 2, verses 2 to 6. Mm -hmm. Well, in verse 2, starting with verse 2, it says, The king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dream. So they came and they stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Mm -hmm. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king and Shiriak, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we shall show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if ye show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. A lot of stuff going on here, starting from verse 2. What are our thoughts? <laughs> A lot of stuff going on right here, starting from verse 2. What is happening here? One thing that jumps out at me is the reference to wise men. Of course, I'm looking at this through the lens of a daughter of God. Yes. So wise to me does not qualify as magicians and astrologers and sorcerers and the Chaldeans. But when we take into context, this is a pagan king. Yes. And he was not of spiritual things. Mm -hmm. And that these different practices that they had and it's interesting when we take the time to delve into them how they use different things the patterns in the skies and mm -hmm. oracles and all these things to help them read mm -hmm. and in therefore give an interpretation Daniel and his companions weren't among these wise men yes and I believe that that was for a purpose okay we can talk about that uh, the purpose of that um, as, it relates, as, as it relates there. But if you notice what is happening, um, Desmond, I'm not sure if you're seeing it, but what is happening here in verse 2, I think that the king, based on what you were saying, couldn't do better. Because yes. he was doing, he was acting based on what he knows. Certainly. Right? That, that's my understanding of what is happening here. And um, so... He was having some issues, some issues, and I, let me use the word issues, with his dream and his kingdom and so forth and so on. And instead of calling upon the God of heaven, mm. he called magicians, mm. sorcerers, yes. Chaldeans, yes. and so forth. And I believe that a lot of persons are doing the same today. 
Mercy. Oh, yeah. A lot of persons are doing, when they have issues in their life, problems in their life, difficulties in their lives, right? Sorrows and grief in their lives, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, they, they, they seems, it, it seems as if they can't overcome some of these challenges in their life. Instead of asking for prayer mm -hmm. and going to the scripture to find answers and to find comfort and so forth, these individuals are taking the time out to take a look. <laughs> and when I say take a look, we're talking about there are individuals who are seeking, just like Nebuchadnezzar, seeking palm readers. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And individuals who are involved in necromancy and witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And in my context, because I'm from Jamaica, in my context, Obiaman. Mm. Right? To deal with and to solve their issues. Yeah. And, and the same thing was happening with Nebuchadnezzar here. And my encouragement, when you are going through problems, in my view, don't go to palm readers. Don't go to soothsayers. Yes. Don't go to individuals who are mixed up in necromancy and witchcraft. Those things are dangerous for us spiritually mm -hmm. and otherwise. Amen. What, what Amen. are our thoughts? Amen. <laughs> and we're, we're going to see some of that um, in the text. We're going to see the, the significant limitations mm -hmm. of these individuals and the claims that they are making in the life and experience of people. Mm -hmm. Pastor, in, in verse yes. 3, if I may, it mm -hmm. talks about the king having a dream. And we all have dreams. Mm -hmm. And I believe we can relate in some regard mm -hmm. in the sense that this king clearly was troubled by what he dreamt. Yes. He couldn't recall, as we learn later down in scripture, he says, but he woke up with a sense of foreboding. Yes. A sense that something was wrong. And in that time and culture, it was understood that any dream that wasn't a pleasant dream, and if you couldn't remember the dream, mm -hmm. it was an indication that something foreboding was to occur. Yes. So he was very anxious in wanting to know what this dream was all about. And as you rightly said, he didn't know better. Mm -hmm. And so he called upon these individuals. And in verses 5 and 6, if I may just... Yes, carry a little yeah. longer. Go ahead, dear. Yeah. The king uses two devices that human, humans in general tend to respond to, fear and favor. Mm -hmm. He says in verse 5 that if you do not tell me the dream, if you don't make it known unto me, and if you don't give the interpretation, that he will cut them into pieces. But if you show me in verse 6 mm -hmm. the interpretation, you will receive gifts and rewards and, and, and honor. And I paused there because I thought, how many of us are moved and motivated by fear or favor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When it comes to serving God, mm -hmm. he doesn't want us to serve him out of fear. But love, yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want us to serve him out of fear what we may potentially gain. Yeah. Yeah. He wants us to serve him out of love, the same love in which he created us, yes. Genesis 1, 27, the same love in which he sent his son to die on the cross, yes. and the same love in which he is going to return to take us to live Amen. with him in eternity. Amen. 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 That's, that's very powerful there. That's a very powerful thought. If you look at verse 4, it says... Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. <laughs> so they were complimenting the king. Mm -hmm. Yes. His greatest desire. Yes. They were complimenting. And, and in other words, they were flattering the king as well. Mm -hmm. Right? So they were using flattery. And then they said to the king, tell thy servants the dream, and we will show you the interpretation thereof. That's interesting. What is happening there? <laughs> it requires a certain uh, amount of you giving information before they can um, uh, uh, predict what, what, what you're looking for. So here, um, 
they have a, to have a point to work with. Yes. And it's the same thing with the soothsayer. When you go to them, they ask you what they the problem is. They mean like palm readers. Yes, mm -hmm. they ask you what the problem is. And based mm -hmm. upon certain um, uh, uh, factors, they'll determine that here. Here is your, the answer to your question that mm -hmm. you're asking. Of mercy. That's right. And that's, that's not right. good. you have that's anything right. else to add to that? Well, <laughs> what did they say in verse 4? Mm -hmm. After they said, long live the king. Tell thy servant the dream, and we will show the interpretation. So exactly what Elder James said. Mm -hmm. They wanted the king to tell them the dream before they could do the interpretation. But it's amazing how God works, because in this particular case, the king couldn't recall the dream. Yes. So he they were couldn't give them anything to work yeah, with. They were in trouble now. And so if we take that dot yeah. and the fact that Daniel and his companions were not among the wise men, there's a very interesting connection yeah. that unfolds in chapter yeah. 2. And, and, and I like that because number four, uh, verse 4, in other words, mm -hmm. is actually calling out the individuals who make claims that they are able to predict people's future. That they want to read your palm, right. the palm of your hands and get your crystal balls, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And say that they can read into your life and read into your future and so forth. This text is actually revealing the, the limitation, yes. Mm. Yes. right? And the futility. <laughs> Am I correct about that? The futility. futility. Yes. The futility. Yes. yes, I just want to be correct. The futility. <laughs> Of, of these individuals. In other words, these individuals are liars. Indeed. Yeah. We can safely say, based on this text here, they are liars because the same thing is happening today because our understanding is that they can't make predictions of the future. What they do is make prognostications. Mm. Mm. And, of course, and of course, this is a powerful weapon and a powerful gift in the hand of the devil himself because he has more than 6,000 years of experience mm. in the affairs of humanity. And he's able, because of his knowledge of human nature and human behavior yeah, and yeah. patterns of behavior and patterns of thought and patterns of action and patterns of decision, he's able to put two and two together and make predictions that may fulfill. But it doesn't necessarily mean that he knows People's future, as powerful as the devil is, as powerful as Satan is, he doesn't have the ability to see the future or even to read people's mind. That's powerful. Yeah. Very powerful. But, but he can make prognostication. So in other words, he can look at your life, Ella James, and he, he, he just watches, he, he watches the, the pattern of your life. And based on the pattern of your life, he can use one of his servants, the you know, the soothsayers or the palm readers or those with this crystal ball to, to actually make a prediction based on the patterns of your life. And, and, and based on those patterns of your life, there's a high possibility that your life will turn out based on how they predict. Mm -hmm. but, it is, but it doesn't mean that they know your future accurately. Only God alone has that ability. And, and sometimes we, <laughs> it becomes a, a self-fulfilling prophecy in that yeah. they tell us and we uh, man, um, adjust our, our, our behavior pattern to make yes. sure it happened that way. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you know, Pastor, as you were, were sharing, it reminds me of how important it is that we seek God's wisdom in all things. Yes. And in Revelation chapter 3, when we read about uh, the message to the Laodicean church, just to digress a bit, one thing in there that pertains to our discussion at this time is that we ask God for that discerning spirit. Mm -hmm. It's referred to as eye salve, that yes. we may be able to see like what is really like before that. us and the origin from which it is coming. Yes, I like that. That's a very powerful safeguard there. And so when we're going through issues, don't go to these people. Right, it's very, very important because even verse 10, verse 10, I think, I think we can go there. Verse 10 shows, all right, because the king didn't, re, um, didn't remember the dream. So the king wanted them based on the role and the function they had in his kingdom. 
as individuals who have the ability to predict the future. And the first time, in my view, the first time in their lives, they have admitted mm -hmm. the limitation that is upon every creature in the entire universe away from God. Yes. All right, watch, look at verse 10. The Chaldean answered before the king and said, there is not a man upon the earth that can show the king the matter thereof. There is no king, no lord, that asks such things at any magicians or astrologers or Chaldeans. So they admitted yeah. that nobody can actually read somebody's mind and predict somebody's future. Connecting the dots. <laughs> Connecting the dots. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. Clearly, yeah. they had conceded. Finally, yeah. they had conceded. Yeah. They were confounded, just as King Nebuchadnezzar was confounded. Yeah. They were perplexed, and they themselves were confused. Yeah. Their life was weighing in the balance. The king said, if you yeah. don't reveal and interpret, yeah. it's death. Yeah. And, they and finally so what happens? Yes. Finally confessed. And this brought me to the, the convincing reality that when we are going through issues and you pray to God and it cannot be solved, and God chooses not to solve those individuals, um, those individual situations, mm -hmm. right? We should still trust God because He knows best. Certainly. But we shouldn't go take a look to these <laughs> individuals. And I say, take a look. Don't, don't look, look into the word of God. <laughs> and one thing that we need to look at too is the fact that when you go, if you should go to these, these individuals, they, they are merchandising you too. Yes. Because it's not, they're not only going to let you leave with a prediction. They are going to ask you to buy certain things to safeguard yes. your gates, the evil that you're trying to avoid. That's right. Have mercy. Yes, yes. And they put it in Good more point. problems. Definitely. Right? Um, spiritually and otherwise. All right, let us look at... Um, so, so when the wise men were unable um, to tell the king his dream, what command did the king Nebuchadnezzar give? In verse 16, mm -hmm. we can look well, also in verse 7. Even before that, verse yes. Seven. Let's go higher up. Mm -hmm. The king answered, well, in verse 7, they pleaded again. Mm hmm because in verse 5, as we previously read, he said that they would be cut in pieces if they didn't reveal and interpret mm -hmm. those two particular things. And in verse 7, they pleaded again. They said, tell, let the king tell his servants the dream. Mm -hmm. Again, they pleaded. And in verse 8, he answered and he said, I know of certainty that ye would gain time. You're trying to buy some time. Oh, mercy. Because you see the thing is gone from me. Verse 9. But if ye will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. For ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore... Tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. And so as we continue to read down, the decree is issued for the death of the wise men, verse yes. 13. Mm -hmm. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Yes. You know, Pastor, yes. I, I, I just yes. have to say. Go there, go there, yes. <laughs> verse 17, I thought, imagine, Daniel and his companions were not among the wise men, mm -hmm. according to what we read here as listed in verse 2. Yet, when the decree is given in verse 13, those to be slain as wise men were included, Daniel and his That's followers. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. And then even Daniel, when he spoke to the captain of the king, he wanted an understanding of what was going on, yes. which led me to believe he wasn't present yes. when these quote-unquote wise men first went to the king. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I found that very interesting, but it goes back to connecting the dot. Yes. 
and of course and of course um so 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 the idea is that the king you know king wise men so to speak were unable so the king decided that all of them should die yes right yes. that all of them should die and this included um, Daniel and his friends, right? The three Hebrew boys, right? Mm -hmm. And um, but Daniel and his friends, they looked to the servant of the king who was given the com command yeah. to destroy them, yeah. to give them some time. Yes, yes. In verse 15, Daniel says, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, 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 after, after, uh, so after, they do, uh, after they asked him for some time, right? Daniel and his friends, they went and they do something that was very powerful. Something that we cannot overlook from the scripture. Something that we too need to pattern in our lives. Something that we need to embrace even as believers in the Lord's army. What, what happened? What happened to Daniel and his friends? They went into what is called an urgent prayer meeting. Amen. Where they sought God. Amen. They sought God's divine intervention because the nature of the king's request and the king's command was, was grave. And it needed what is called divine intervention. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You see the attitude? Yeah. Just look at the attitude of Daniel in comparison to Nebuchadnezzar. He, was, he had his issue. He sought the wrong individuals. Mm -hmm. But Daniel, he and his friends, they, they had their issues, but they decided to seek the God of heaven. And the Bible revealed to us something powerful and supernatural took place as a result of prayer. And that is something that we can exemplify in our lives. Amen? Yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> can I add? Yes, go ahead. If we go back to verse 16, it says, Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time mm -hmm. and that he should show the king the interpretation. It's interesting, as, as Elder James and I were discussing, Daniel didn't first go to God and then speak to the captain of the king. Mm -hmm. By faith, mm -hmm. he asked for more time. Amen. Amen. By faith, he declared that he would know the interpretation. Amen. And then from there, he went with his companions. And you know, Pastor, it's wonderful when you can pray with a fellow believer. Yes. Yeah. It's powerful when you can pray with a fellow believer. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible tells us, and I cannot quote the text off the top of my head, but where two or more are gathered in the yes. name of God, yes. concerning things of God. Matthew 18, 20. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. God promises to be in the midst. Mm -hmm. And so they came together and they had this prayer session. Yes, powerful. Because their lives were on the line. Mm -hmm. And they went to the God in heaven and spoke to him. And in verse 18, it opens with saying that they desired the mercies of the God of heaven concerning the secret. So they went down in deep prayer. Yes. And they asked specifically, as we continue to read in verse 18, mm -hmm. that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. And can I continue yeah. a little no, bit in this yeah. prayer? Yeah, of course. Is, this yeah, is, this is powerful. Yeah. This is a, a powerful, powerful prayer. prayer. Yes. Because then it goes on to tell us in verse 19 that God answered. Yes. God revealed the secret. And it's a secret because no one knew. Yes. And we've read passages just previously reinforcing that God is omniscient and God is all-knowing. And so it says that the secret was revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. And Daniel blessed the God of heaven. God answered 
and Daniel blessed. Yeah, praised him. Yeah, blessed him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said in verse twenty. And, 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 and we should have run past this. I, I think okay. I think we should have run past this when God comes through for us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> when God delivered us, yeah. when God answered our yeah. prayers, yes. we shouldn't keep quiet. Amen. We should glorify and we should Hallelujah. honor him and we should praise Amen. him. And we should let it be known yes. to him that we are grateful. Yes, yes. indeed. Yes, indeed. continue. <laughs> Amen. And I like the words in, in verse 20. If we don't know what to say to praise him and to thank him, let us say, blessed be the name of God forever and, and ever, ever yes. for wisdom and might are his, and he changeth the times, the seasons, he removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. things yes. He knoweth what is in the darkness, darkness and yes. the light dwelleth with him. Mm -hmm. I thank thee oh, and praise yes. thee, Amen. O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee. Yes. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Of mercy. What a prayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is change a few words and add it to what we are asking for and how powerful <laughs> a, a prayer that would be for ourselves. That's yeah. right. So that, that, yeah, that was a very powerful prayer. And of, course, and of course, based on that kind of praying, God answered. And Amen. Daniel was now commissioned to go before the king. Right? So the dream was revealed to Daniel and also the interpretation. Yes. And Daniel was now commissioned. Daniel went before the king, right, to reveal all that the Lord has revealed to him. Right? So what what was Daniel's attitude? Whom did Daniel say revealed the dream and its interpretation to King Nebuchadnezzar? Because now in verse 26 to 28, Daniel was now before King Nebuchadnezzar. We, this information, this important information, this relevant information, this needed information that Daniel received the night before. Yeah, let me assume the night before. Right, the night before. And, and, and I, in my view, that was a very powerful temptation, human temptation. What happened? Daniel... What happened? <laughs> he went before the king. Yes. If I can take us to... Verse 26? 24. Mm -hmm. Just that last part. Because Daniel goes back to the king of the captain and he says, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Mm -hmm. And then we come down to verse 26. And Daniel is before the king who was renamed. Daniel was renamed as Bel Belshazzar. Mm -hmm. And the king says, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Mm -hmm. And Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded Cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show on to the king? So he set that record straight yes. right there. Yes. Out but. the gate. Yes. But. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that a wonderful conjunction in the yes. English language? Yes. You Forget know? about what I just said. Right. And <laughs> listen to what I'm saying now. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. Of mercy. You know, Pastor, when we were talking about this and you broke it down mm -hmm. about the character of Daniel mm -hmm. and what he in his humanness could have been tempted to do. Of course. Tell me all over again, of please. Of course, because, because this was a very... <laughs> powerful opportunity for Daniel to take all the glory because notice in verse 25 when his introduction 
to the king was that this man is able to tell you yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. yes, all yes. that you need to solve your problem now, king. That's right. And Daniel forget everything about that because of his Christian character and humility Amen. that he demonstrated. He looked at the king and said, no, this has nothing to do with me. This has to do with God all the way. Amen. And so he ensured that God gets all the glory and the honor and the praises. And of course, when I look at this, I'm looking at the contrast between Daniel and also a particular king in antiquity. Mm -hmm. A king in the Bible, I think it was Ezekiah, that God gave mm -hmm. an extra 15 years upon yes, his life. Yes, sure. yes. He was sick unto death. And he prayed to the God of heaven. And the God of heaven decided to give him 15 extra years. Just imagine you at the age of 70. I'm not saying that Ezekiah was the age of 70. And God allowed you to live until you're about 85. Or you were at the, you're at the age of 85 and God allowed you to see the, the century. Yes, yes. Right? So that was a blessing that God gave um, Ezekiah. And... The opportunity came where heathens and pagans went to, um, to Ezekiah's house. And Ezekiah allowed a very good opportunity to glorify God past. Yes. He decided to show the people furniture. Yes. <laughs> Instead of sitting them down and testify of the goodness and the grace of God. And, right. and, and, and sometimes we are like that too. Yes. Sometimes certain things, we achieve certain things and we attain certain things and we are successful in certain things in this life, even as Christian and as fellow citizens of the world. Mm -hmm. And when we have the opportunity to, to glorify and to exalt the name of Jesus, we point people to us mm -hmm. and to what we have. Mercy. Yeah. Yes, yes. Daniel was not like that. Well Daniel said. pointed the king to the king of kings. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? It is. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's very powerful. And if we can jump over to the book of Romans, chapter 16. Yes, that's a good text there. Yeah. You know, Paul says here, if I can get my fingers on it. Mm-hmm. Starting at verse 25, it, it's so eloquently written, recognizing who God is. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment mm -hmm. of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever and ever amen amen that's for that's very powerful there yeah so we can see the character of humility yes. from yes from Daniel right there because he could have taken all the glory and so he pointed the king to the God of heaven, and then he started to explain what the king dreamt and also the interpretation of the dream. Let us look at that now, right? Um, based on verse, verses 31 to 35. In verse 31, Daniel said to the king, Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a, a great image. image. Right, um, and, it's, and then he says here, then he said here, uh, the head of the image was of gold. gold. Yes. The breast and the arms were of what? Silver. Silver. Yes, and then what? The belly, belly and, and the thighs. thighs bronze. Of bronze, yes. And then the, the leg of iron. iron. The feet of partly. Iron and, and clay. clay. Right, and of course. So, so, so that was basically, ex that was basically what the king saw in his dream and all of what he dreamt started to come back to his mind and he was so amazed mm -hmm. by the accuracy of what this man of God was revealing to him. Yes. The only, 
what, what is coming to mind? The only way this could happen in the life of any individual, you have to be close to God. Indeed. Definitely. This is not normal. Mm -hmm. You cannot be a normal man of God for this manifestation to take place in your life. And you know, Pastor, this is why I, I mentioned connecting the dots. Yeah. It was not King Nebuchadnezzar's cohorts that could reveal this. It was a man of God yes. revealing the things of God yes. Amen. to an unbeliever mm -hmm. to know who is God. That, that's right. Beca because one of the things that we cannot miss in this, in this is that this, 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 this dream was basically God communicating to Nebuchadnezzar the future of not only of his kingdom, but the future of the world. Yes. That's right. That's right. Which include in our day and age, in our time too. Yes. In our time. That's the powerful thing about this dream. Right, so Daniel started to give the interpretation, right? So what did Daniel say was the interpretation of the head of gold? What was his interpretation of the head of gold? <laughs> and what do we have to say on that? Right? The head of gold was what? In verse 38 is what? That's Babylon. That's Babylon. Yeah. That Str is yeah. Babylon. Yeah. And I would imagine that as King Nebuchadnezzar heard this, he must have paused and felt wonderful. Mm -hmm. The head was gold. The head was the top of the image. Yes, tell us about that. Yes, you were, you, yeah, you were sharing some thoughts on that earlier. Um, yeah. Looking a bit into the history of Babylon, mm -hmm. we come to understand that King Nebuchadnezzar was one of those kings that pontificated. He wanted the best of the best. <laughs> My understanding as I read and studied was that there are streets in Babylon that are named after their little demigods. Of mercy. Mm -hmm. Because it was an idolatrous nation. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, they had thousands upon thousands of priests. And as we, we read and we learn about the stature that this mm -hmm. empire had and the world was at its feet, for lack of a better expression. Mm -hmm. King Nebuchadnezzar wanted his empire to live on. He mm -hmm. wanted himself to live on. I was listening to Mark Finley, and he said recently, yeah. he visited Babylon, don't know how recent, but he had taken up one of the artifacts, mm -hmm. the bricks, and it was understood that King Nebuchadnezzar had his name written in the very things. stones that mm -hmm. built his empire to, signi to signify mm -hmm. the eternity of his power. Yes. So mercy. he believed and so he desired. And mm -hmm. that's why he was having these dreams, as you originally said. He yeah. wanted to know the future. future what, yeah. would, what would happen yeah. to his great empire yeah. in the future? And, and, and of course, uh, you have anything to say on that? No. And, 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 despite, and, despite, and despite what Daniel told him about the dream, because when you look at the other verses, it told you that other kingdoms will actually come. Yes. Chapter 3, actually, in my view, it, this is my understanding, in chapter 3, it seems to me that Nebuchadnezzar refused to accept Daniel's interpretation, godly interpretation mm. of his dream. He refused to believe that his kingdom will actually, you know, be destroyed and another yes. kingdom yes. inferior okay. to it will actually take over. And the reason why I say that is because he set up an image yes. mm. that was made of pure gold, which, it, which, signify, which signify that the Babylonian kingdom will actually last forever. Yes. Yes, and at the trumpet sound, have mercy. <laughs> they were to bow down and worship, worship this, this golden image. image, right? Mercy. So, so, so that's my understanding there. So, so you're perfectly right in terms of his attitude of pontificating, his power, and and, and all of that, mm -hmm. right? Then it says here, then in verse thirty nine and ter verse thirty nine tells you that uh, an inferior kingdom 
which was the Medes and the Persians kingdom, right? Actually took over. And then also, um, you know, after them, Greece took over. These are inferior kingdoms. Because when you look at the various materials. Right. Ah, yeah, yes. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes. No. You were right, Pastor. The materials, mm -hmm. they depreciate in value. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the symbolism that's also presented in this particular uh, vision that Daniel had and this dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, we also, as we follow history and we look at these particular empires or nations, mm -hmm. they also depreciated or decrease in their level of moral living. Yes. They became yeah. more and more immoral mm -hmm. over time. And so these materials speak to that. And, and one other interesting aspect, as we follow the history, which is what reinforces the validity and the accuracy mm -hmm. of this prophecy that was written hundreds of years before mm -hmm. it took place, yes. is that even the government's move between a monolithic government, a single leader, yes. in cases where mm, that's a it was point, yeah. a divided leadership. When we take the Medes and the Persians. For example, yes. Mm -hmm. If we could go to, Elder James, can I trouble you to read Isaiah 45 for us? Just verse one. Mm -hmm. There was something there in looking at the Medes and the Persians mm -hmm. that I thought was quite interesting. Going back to the Bible, letting the Bible interpret itself. Isaiah 45? Yes, verse 1, verse please. One. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I had holding, to subdue nations before him, and mm -hmm. I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaves gates, and the gates shall not be shut. Have mercy. Amen. Amen. That Amen. Was, I, I, Thank I think you. that was hov that, that was over an hundred years. Yes, the yes. Isaiah. Yes, yeah. the Isaiah. That was what, predicted. Yes, yeah. what the what the prophet Isaiah had yeah. said about Cyrus the king. Yes. Cyrus was the king of Persia. Yes. And when we read in this prophecy, mm -hmm. Daniel two, Medes and the Persians, Darius was the king of the Medes. Yeah. And the two came together. Yes. And they conquered Babylon. Yes, mm -hmm. with the same with the same issue with the two leave gates. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. That was divine intervention. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So when you look now at the particular uh, structure of the image, right down to the empires being identified by a single body part yes. versus more than one body part, mm -hmm. it is indicative of the kind of government that yeah. leads them. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I found that very, very interesting. In some of the, as we go through, we see, yes. let's, if we go to the metal part, the bronze, verse 39, that speaks about Greece. Yes, with Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great. Yeah. In, in his, in his mid-30s, uh, mid-30s, yes. young, he phenomenal. It. Yeah. In the other prophecies in Daniel, mm -hmm. it indicates how quickly and swiftly yes. he came and he conquered, conquered the Medes the and the yeah. Persians. Yeah. But in the prophecy, it talks about two body parts, the belly and the thighs, yes. representing Greece. Mm -hmm. Greece started out as a monolithic government, a single government, obviously Alexander the Great. Mm -hmm. But after Alexander the Great died, those that took over arrived at a place of division. Yes. And you've got now the thighs yeah. and up rose the two main powers thereafter yeah. being Syria and Egypt. Mm -hmm. So the image is so telling. Mm -hmm. It yes. reveals so much about not just the past, but it's coming to the future because mm -hmm. we haven't finished moving through the empire. Today being May the 30th, 2020, yeah. we haven't finished moving through the image, rather. Yes. Yeah. We're yes. still in the image. Of course. Um, and of course, uh, after we have Greece that reigned in, you know, BC 331, then Rome took over yes. yeah. and started to reign in 168 BC, mm -hmm. all the way down to 476 AD. Yes. And then now, based on the prophecy, 
you will have what is called the divided kingdom of Rome, yes, right? Yes. Which is basically Europe that we have today. Mm -hmm. And of course, Europe still exists in our day and age. Yes, mm -hmm. and it's right? interesting because yeah. we have the European Union. Yes. And according to prophecy, the materials of the leg and the, the feet, yes. the clay and the iron, iron, will never ever mix. Yes. And when we started out with those 10 divisions of Rome, which represent the 10 toes, mm -hmm. and some of the names should be familiar to us, the Vandals, the Lombards, the Anglo-Saxons, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. We still today yes. have that division, even in the European Union. Yes. You know, we hear about Brexit, Britain yes. wanting to exit the European Union. Union and, and so There's forth, yeah. always some issue amongst these different nations where they cannot come together, and that is consistent with prophecy. With right. prophecy, be because yeah, men right. cannot, men cannot. You know, I'm not sure if you have any thoughts on it, but men cannot um, actually, you know, go against God's sure word of prophecy and prevail. Mm -hmm. And so many world leaders tried. We're talking about Charlemagne. We're talking about Hitler. We're talking about Napoleon. Many of these great leaders of the past who exist in Europe try to unite Europe. Different kings, they try to unite Europe, right? Um, you know, but they never prevail the because prophecy right. already predicted, the word of God already established yes. that, you know, iron and clay will not be mixed. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. They will not cleave together. They will not have this kind of relationship that will have this kind of union mm -hmm. that yeah. will accomplish certain things because God's word is powerful. The other thing that I want to, th there's a powerful lesson that is actually coming to my mind. If you notice, at the, if you notice as powerful as these kingdoms were, Desmond, mm -hmm. you know, Babylon and Media Persia and Greece, they all came to an end. Yes. Which, so, which shows me we cannot put our trust as human beings in human power. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. We cannot, no matter how affluent, no matter how powerful, no matter how, you know, elevating, right, um, an institution is, as long as it is of human divine, or it involves humanity, we cannot rest assured I put full confidence in these things because they are frail in the eyes of God. The only thing that we can surely stand on and that will last forever is the word of God. Yes. You remember what the Bible says? The Bible says, I think in Isaiah 40 and verse 8, the grass withereth, mm -hmm. the flower fadeth, but the word, but of, the God word of God shall abide forever. forever. So no, no human power is able to last. And that is why it's important, like Daniel, we should humble ourselves. Indeed. Because nothing in this life will last forever. Indeed. No matter how powerful it is. And you know, Pastor, the, mm -hmm. the, the timing of this prophecy is timely because of what's going on in our world today. Many people are trying to understand mm -hmm. what's really going on. Yes. And as we turn to God's word and we read these prophecies, Daniel and what's in Revelation, yes. as we listen to our Bible study programs, which want to equip all of us, yes. believers and non-believers, to what is going on around us, it really helps you find a hope and a peace Yes, that allows powerful. you to yes. remain steadfast in yes. the midst of all, all of the of turmoil and that's around a very good us. Point. That's a very right? good point. Because we know that mm -hmm. God is in mm -hmm. control. Amen. He's in control. Amen. That's a very powerful point there. Um, another point that, that is coming to my mind is the whole idea of the fact. The, the, the authenticity of God's word. Mm -hmm. If you want a powerful, convincing reason to really trust the word of God, the prophecy 
of Daniel chapter 2 is a very powerful tool for us to be Amen. acquainted with. Certainly. Amen. If we want to, to have a, a, a very effective reason, convincing reason to trust God's word. Mm -hmm. Because we're talking about the, pink, the, the pinpoint accuracy yes. mm -hmm. of the fulfillment mm -hmm. of these predictions mm -hmm. are amazing. Yes. Indeed. And it tells us that we can trust the word of God Indeed. so that we can get this level of peace that you're talking about and sustaining grace in times of difficulties. Uh, let, us, let us use the last 15 minutes to look at the stone. What are our thoughts on that? The stone in the prophecy. It said there was a stone that was yes. cut out of the mountain without hands, mm -hmm. without hands, mm -hmm. without human hands. Mm -hmm. And it struck the image, not on the head, that's not right. on the hand, That's not right. in the chest, not in the belly, but it said it struck the image feet. <laughs> I don't know, Elder James, mm -hmm. if I were to, mm -hmm. for some reason or another, find another purpose for your feet and cut them off. <laughs> <laughs> what would happen to you? Uh, I would fall. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed, and I think that's so significant. Yeah. Yeah. This stone that hit this powerful, prominent image that seemed invincible yes. was crumbled. Yeah. And it wasn't just crumbled. Dust. Yes, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. blow it away like it's nothing. Yeah. And that is significant because it proves that these kingdoms, Babylon right down, yes. have not remained in power yes. and will not yeah. remain in power in, because we're in the time yeah. of the toes right yeah, including now. Including Europe that we are in the time that's of right, now. That's yeah. right, that's right. And so this stone will demolish that, but the stone doesn't remain a stone. And what baffled me yeah. when I used my, what, what do you preachers say, sanctified imagination? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I imagined the stone was yeah. small mm -hmm. because you couldn't see it initially. Mm -hmm. And to think this little stone could bring down mm -hmm. an image like that, it reminds me of David who slayed Goliath. Yes, I like that. That's a good application there, yes. And so it's not the size of the stone. Mm -hmm. mm. When we understand what that stone represents. Tell us, tell us what it represents. Tell us, because this is, this is the, the, the crux of the matter. This is the, the highlight of our studies today. Well, I have to share the joy. Yes. Elder yes. James, tell us the stone and I'll tell come back. Tell what, what this represents, because this is the highlight of our study. And I'm Indeed. excited about this stone. Indeed. And Indeed. This, this stone basically tells me that human power will not reign forever. Yes. And the issues of this life will not reign forever. That's this is right. what the stone is telling me. Tell us. Yes. This stone represents none other than Jesus Christ himself. Yes. Amen. The second advent of Christ. Yes. Amen. The establishment of his kingdom upon this earth. And you know, that's beautiful because yeah. when you read about this in mm -hmm. the beginning of Daniel chapter 2, it doesn't sound good. No. Yes. It doesn't look good. <laughs> we were wondering, oh my goodness. But when you come down to verse 44, yes. and it says that this kingdom, as Elder James said, this kingdom, the Bible tells me, shall not be left to other people yes. like King Nebuchadnezzar and all of those previous kings, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Beautiful. And verse 45, if I may, for as yes. much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain. Amen. Amen. It is certain. Yes. Amen. And the interpretation yeah. is yeah. Sure. sure. Amen. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And for us, what we read here is certain. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And the interpretation when we go to the history books yeah. proves yes. it is sure. Yes, yeah, sure. Yes. It is yeah. sure. The interp I'm, and, and I like that word. The dream is certain. And, and, and this is what a lot of people are looking for. People are looking for certainty. Yes. Stability. And that is why Absolutely. truth is so important. And this is so comforting, Ella James, mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. It's comforting in the, in, in the sense that the most certain thing that we have in this life mm -hmm. is a second advent of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The second advent of Jesus Christ, the second coming of Jesus Christ, despite what is happening in this world, mm -hmm. this is a certainty that we should hold on, on to. to. Yes. Yes. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. And if last week we studied that, yes. and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will, I come, will come again. again. And yes. when it destroy these kingdoms, this also represents the destruction of evil. The yes. destruction of sin, the destruction of Satan, the destruction Amen. of the power of darkness. Because if God is going to establish his kingdom and his kingdom is going to reign forever, forever. or stand forever, it means that he's going to destroy everything that has to do with Satan and darkness and sin and evil and all of these things so that we can live and reign with Jesus forever. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Any, any other thoughts? Any other thoughts? I, it brings That's me right. to another passage. Go ahead, Elder James. I'm going to no, look no, for go, this passage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Matthew 30, 25, 31. It culminates what you said, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him then he then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations yes and he shall separate them one from another as the sheep divideth his sheep and the goats and it continues to go on but i want to emphasize that the time is coming where the son of man will come in all his glory, glory yes and his kingdom shall be established forever. forever amen forever yeah that is so powerful you know someone is as someone is asking the question one of our viewers one of our listeners asking the question and of course we can't take a stab at it maybe this is the only question we can answer because we're on, we only have three minutes because mm -hmm. and i think that we did some justice <laughs> to the study. There are more that we can go into, oh, definitely. But, but I think so that we much. did sufficiently with the time that we have, right, as it relates to this prophecy. So the person is asking the question, the stone did not come from the sky, but from a mountain. What country is that mountain? <laughs> and of course, when I read, my stab at this would be Ezekiel. I think Ezekiel 28, where it talks about um, Lucifer coming from the holy mount of God. Right? So that's what it represents. Because when you look at the entire context of the passage, mm -hmm. it could never, we understand that it's not coming from the sky, but it represents, um, um, you know, a kingdom that is actually coming from the holy mount of God, mm -hmm. which is actually heaven. Mm -hmm. So the kingdom of heaven coming down. Mm -hmm. And of course, the distinction of the text suggests that um, it was cut out of the mountain without hands. <laughs> also, you remember in Daniel chapter 5 or Daniel chapter 6, there was mm -hmm. um, an invisible hand. Writing, yes. yes. Writing on the wall. Yes. yes. So we can see reflection there. Yes. And of course, we know that that is God's doing. That is God's work. Mm -hmm. So clearly in scripture, we are seeing that this mountain represent um, actually the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. heaven. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Without hand yeah. is very significant, significant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to remind us like the Ten Commandments were written with the finger of God. Of God, yes. The divine implication of that stone is paramount to our understanding that 
it could not be credited to any human being. The destruction of the image could not be credited to any human yeah. creation, yeah. but that of God. Yes, also the old idea of standing forever. Yes. That, 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 that only can be attributes of God. Definitely. Right? All right, I think that's... So the reference one to the text you gave earlier was... Mm -hmm. um, verse 14? Yeah, uh, yes. Ha, um, Ezekiel 28, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Right? Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know that that's where Lucifer was yeah. in heaven. Mm -hmm. And that is God's holy mountain. So it's referring to that based on our understanding. Amen. Right? Because this has to be a divine intervention because every other kingdom, right, you know, were described in scripture mm -hmm. as of a temporal nature. Yeah. But this kingdom is eternal. Amen. And Amen. that has to be the kingdom of our Lord and our Christ. Amen. 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 So it's a beautiful study. Yes. Um, you want to close us off in prayer? Yes, Can I just say one thing? Yes. Mm -hmm. When I think about the stone and the fact that we are living in the time of the toes, it is an admonition to me mm -hmm. to say, what am I doing with my life to make mm -hmm. sure I am ready mm -hmm. and worthy of the eternal kingdom that will soon come and stand forever? Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. And of course, I like that because it's important we understand that the coming of Christ is absolutely certain. We as individuals, all of us here, need to ensure that we make our calling and election sure. Because that is God's ultimate desire based on his love for us. That is to save us eternally so that we too can be a part of this eternal kingdom. That is without sin and sinfulness and the consequences of sin. And we will live forever. I'm looking forward to that. Amen. And it is my yes. desire to be there. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we pause to give you thanks for your word which have enlightened us, dear Lord. As your word have given us light, dear Lord, we pray that you'll help us to walk therein. So that when you come, dear Lord, we may be accounted as faithful by your yes. lips. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who have not yet formulated uh, uh, the relationship with you, dear Lord. We pray that mm. in this moment may be the beginning of a new walk with you. Amen. We pray, dear Lord, that you will guide your decision, empower them, dear Lord, to live holy and godly. And for us, dear Lord, keep us faithful, keep us walking and living for your glory. We pray, dear Lord, that as we have heard and we have obeyed your Lord that our life will be in accordance with your will and may you be glorified always because we have heard and we have responded in a positive way to that which we have heard in Jesus most blessed and hallowed name we do pray with thanksgiving amen amen, amen. amen. thank you very much thank you very much um, to all our listeners and our viewers for joining us um, to a wonderful evening or afternoon of the study of God's word. We look forward in terms of seeing you next week again. So remember to like, share, and subscribe. And also click the notification bell so that you can know when we have another powerful you know, content from the word of God to share with you. But remember to share with somebody so that they too can share in the blessings that you are receiving at this time. Thank you, and God bless you always. Amen.